The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the September 27th, the terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstances of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this, during this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in at 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, we've got you covered there, too. You can always send me an email. Send that to steve at tfnn.com. And inside the subject heading, if you would be kind enough to put radio show question, of course, inside our Tiger's Den, well, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, I got all the U.S. indices trading to the upside. A sea of green out there. The Dow's up 267, nine tenths of a percent. A little over one percent for the S and P, or 40 points. One to four tenths for the Nasdaq 100, 157 points. Two percent for the Russell. That's 32 points. One and eight tenths for the semis, 43 points. Trannies are up by one and seven tenths, or 206 points. It is a sea of green. We're going to go figure out if that sea of green is going to hold, or what needs to occur in order for it to hold. You've got gold up by 10 bucks, trade at 1644. Silver up 21 cents, 1869. Lights Recruit is having a nice little rally up two dollars and a quarter at 78.99. Natural gas off 16 pennies. She's trading out at 685, and the 30-year Treasury is down one point and seven ticks. 125.09 is the print there. Now lead the charge dollar-wise to the upside. You got booking holdings of 26 bucks. Mercado Libre is up 18. Enphase Energy up 17. MicroStrategy 13. Restoration Hardware is up 12. To the downside. Not really much in the way of big movers out here. You got AM TD Digital. That's off 650 or 10%. I'm just looking for stocks versus the uh, ETFs out here. That's pretty hard to find. Uh, Biotechnine Corp, T E C H, that's off three bucks. That's 1%. Mostly movers versus the shakers out here. So let's go figure out what the markets are doing or at least what levels you need to be watching. So the first place that we'll start, we'll go take a look at those TD9 count bottoms that have formed inside of each of the equity future contracts out here. So we'll take a look at those daily charts right now. The upper left, you can see that yesterday was the day following bar number nine. That made the low. That yellow from yesterday is the key area of support that you would be watching for. If price closes below that, it negates the signal, and that says that we had lower. Otherwise, what price should do it should work off this oversold condition. That oversold condition should take the ES mini. The target should be its oscillator and change line, currently printed at 38.10. That number is going to go up and down as price moves higher and lower. The NQ, same pattern. However, it confirmed its TD9 count, did not make a lower low yesterday. It confirmed its TD9 count, so it's the low from two days ago. Uh, that is the uh, lower threshold level that you'll be observing. So with a first price target for the NQ, should be its oscillator and change line around 11.712. Inside the Dow, that area of its first price target is 30,303. Again, those numbers are going to change. It completed its TD9 count yesterday. It's yesterday's low that is the key threshold level there. And the Russell 2000 will complete its TD9 count bottom today. Today's the bar following bar number nine. Looks like yesterday's low will be the low to be observing. It should target 1755 out there. So that's what the daily time frame charts are showing us. Now, you'll notice that each of the daily bars at present at 1110 in the morning show bullish reversal candles, bullish engulfing candles, a piercing candle for the Dow, bullish engulfing candles for the NQ and the Russell 2000. 
That would then confirm a buy the D point pattern. Now, do two bottoms make it stronger than one bottom? No. Um, at least not that I've been able to find. One bo a bottom is a bottom out here. But you would have those two patterns. And that would, again, just be confirming that we should see price rise up towards those oscillator unchanged line levels. Okay, so we got that out of the way. But we can't stop there. We've got to go take a look at what's going on under the covers. And under the covers is really the 30-minute time frame charts. That's what I've found so far to be the ones or the one that has provided us with the most information. And that's going to be the NQ. We'll shift gears here and we'll focus just on the NQ, at least for this segment here. So we take a look at the NQ. What we'll notice here, again, this is the 30-minute time frame that we're looking at, is right at about the uh, 3.30 time frame on Friday afternoon, what the NQ did for a 30-minute time frame was generated Rhodes Momentum Indicator Bottom. If you're not familiar with that pattern, it is the one of the, the best patterns, not because I named it after myself. It is, one of, it is the pattern that has been present before every single bear market in the history of the Dow going back in the 1890s out there. Uh, and it also is great at uh, a lows. It helps us identify market turns for any time frame out there. So you can you can learn all about that pattern. You can subscribe to Mastery Probability. It costs you zero because you got 30 day free trial. So for 29 days, you know if you cancel after 20 days, it's cost you nothing, and you will have learned a ton. Now. One of the other patterns that we use out here, the TD9 counts, we already spoke about those on the daily time frame. The TD9 counts also establish for us natural areas of breakdown support, our breakout support and breakdown resistance. The breakdown resistance lines on my chart are these green horizontal lines. Yesterday's rally stopped right at, now the number was 11,534.75. The actual high in that 1030 session got up to 11,537.75. But remember, it is the body of the candle that is the essence of price. It is not the screaming meme, uh, the uh, wicks to the upside or the downside, the lower upper shadows out there. That is just the screaming memes that take place during that time frame, or in this case, a 30 minute bar. But price found, a resistance at that level and what did we do today we saw that rally that took us right up into the uh, 10 o'clock time frame stopped right at that 11 5 34 75 so if i were to ask pose this question to you what do you think happens if price closes above this is the nq now on a 30 minute basis for two consecutive bars above 11 5 34 75 well, I would say what it does is that tells us that there is that this counter trend move, the daily TD9 counts are taking hold and that they should, in fact, go target those oscillator unchanged line levels. Now, in the case of the NQ here, ever since it's been able to hit that level, it's really been consolidating with inside its uh, current profile out here. So the bulls are nowhere near out of the woods. They would be if we get two consecutive close above 11, 534. However, there's also resistance inside the NQ. It has its neck. When you typically break one level of resistance, TD9 count that is, you go to the next level. Well, that's at 11,585. Above 11,585, you get up to the 11,752 mark. So those are the areas to be watching. What else should we be watching, Steve-O? Excellent question. I think the next thing that we want to go take a look at is TAS market profile breath for the, uh, uh, for the NQ. So to do that, Let's pull up. First, let's pull up the short term time frame. That is the 30 minute. I think we're still on the same page. Yes, we are. Beautiful thing. So what we have going on right now in a 30 minute uh, profile. On a 30 minute basis, we take a look at all the instruments trading inside the NDX 100. What we have are 181 of those are trading above the top of the 30 minute profile. 99. No, this is the S&P. I'm on. My, I apologize. See, like that, that, of course, that didn't make sense. Uh, Stevie just took an extra minute to uh, catch up to that. When we come back to this breakout here, I'll give you the uh, P's and Q's or the correct data for the NQ out there. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. 
Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. So what we've got on our screen right now are the uh, rest statistics here for the NQ, for the NASDAQ 100, on a 30-minute basis. I left that up during the uh, breakout there. Those folks that were following the live feed saw it switch from a bullish, a bullish crossover to a bearish crossover. I mean, right now, as we speak, there's 34 instruments trading below a 30-minute profile, 30 above. So it says that there should be some selling pressure. When there's selling pressure, then we go back to that 30-minute chart, take a look at support. So we'll do that here momentarily. Let me uh, minimize this screen out here just for the moment. And let's switch back and take a look. at. So we knew that uh, going into that last segment, and remember, what we established here is that if price closes above 11,534.75 for two consecutive bars, it says rally on for the uh, NQ out here. But now we take a look at the 30-minute time frame NQ. We can see that price is testing support. So you got a bearish crossover. A bearish should be able to, sellers should be able to push price to close below 11,447. But that's the area of support. So buyers are trying to defend that level. If that area fails, I would say that price is going to go target these little rising trend lines out here. And where is that? At about 11,340-ish or so, 11,350 would really be dependent upon the uh, time out there. Uh, so right now, that's what's going on on a 30-minute basis. Now let's go back and go back to the other screen. And what we'll do here is we'll take a look at the larger time frames for the uh, – it's going to be this screen here – for the uh, for the NQ, we can come back and take a look at the uh, where is it right here? We can take a look at the uh, S and P uh, in a few. But here we take a look at the NQ. Let's get over to that. What we see is that on the 60 minute time frame, let's just simply expand this out. Let's get rid of those that are trading with inside the profile. You can see it's really quite bullish out here. Now, when I say quite bullish, I mean there's 47 instruments trading above the top of a 60 minute profile and uh, 13 trading below the bottom. What this is signaling to me, at least at this moment, is that these retracements that we're seeing inside of the NQ, you know, if you're an aggressive trader, you know, they most certainly can be bought. Now, what I'd be looking for inside of the 60-minute chart is for price, uh, you know, I'm assuming here at this stage here, as long as the 30 minutes still remains with a bearish crossover, sellers should be able to push, push price lower. The lower area that I'd be looking at to consider um, taking a, 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 a long position 
would be 11386. Now, how does Stevie come up with 11386? Great question. Uh, we're going to show you that in a moment. First, as long as I'm here, let's go from the one hour to the next larger time frame, which is a four hour time frame. And in the four hour time frame, this still has its work cut out for us, but not that much. There are 23 instruments in the NDX 100 trading above profile, 24 trading below profile. So this is getting very close to a bullish crossover. And if it does that, then likely the NQ would be getting ready to take out that 11.534.75 area out there. So that's what's going on with the NDX 100, the NQ. Let's not stop there as long as I'm on this screen here because I really want to close this screen down, which is uh, taking a look at the, at least the top. Uh, instruments inside the NDX 100. That's assuming I still have it open. I think, yeah, we do. So let's go take a look at those charts here. We're still on that screen. So, and let me get rid of this stuff here. In, it's in the foreground. So if we take a look at Apple. There's a couple different A to B equals CD patterns we could draw in here. Um, and so you do have a confirm. This is the larger one that I'm showing. And uh, uh, what Apple, so Apple does still have a confirmed by the D point pattern. Price so far today ran in resistance at that red oscillator and change line. If it could close, close above 154.73, likely signals move up to 157.90. Microsoft has confirmed a TD9 count bottom. Price has found resistance at its oscillator and change line. It's currently 241.59. To close above that, suggest a further rally. Amazon has a TD9 count bottom. Suggest a rally to 120.80. In the case of Tesla, it still has a TD9 count bottom. Price right now testing resistance at the top of its uh, daily profile. The top of that profile is 287.50. A close above that would signal move up to 303.65. Google, TD9 count bottom with price targeting at least 100.95. NVIDIA needs a bullish reversal candle to confirm a road momentum indicator bottom. Uh, Facebook, Meta. Will had completed a TD9 count pattern yesterday. That should send price up to 142.86. In the case of uh, Pepsi, it's just consolidating with inside its daily profile out there. So overall, you can see that in the NDX 100 stocks, the charts that are going to impact the NQ out here, price is finding resistance in the case of Apple and Microsoft at the oscillator and change line. And uh, that's really all that I have to show. Now we're going to go back and take a look at that 60-minute time frame chart. So let me close this down here. That'll speed up my system just a tad. So give me a moment to do just that. And then what we'll do is we're going to go take a look at a different set of charts. We'll look at the 60-minute time frame for the NQ. We'll get that up on our screen here momentarily. And that's where the number came from. So on a retracement, what we're looking for is to see, does the NQ hold its TD9 count breakout support at 11,386? That is both the bottom of its 60-minute profile and uh, its TD9 count breakout level. Now, we can see as the 30-minute chart was hitting that resistance area, that TD9 count breakdown area, um, the NQ was getting close to its as well, which is 11, uh, 11, 5, 11, hold on a minute. I can't even read that. 11, 5, what the heck? 11.582.75. So uh, what, what the 60-minute time frame chart did was it confirmed a TD9 count top. What does that say? When you get a topping pattern, price you get back to support. Well, support, at that stage, price was already inside that profile. It's slightly bearish in structure. Uh, now with price being below 11.456, it should be able to target that 11.386 area. That is where price should find support. That is where the buyers should be lined up. If that area holds... Uh, then that could be setting up an A to B equals C D to the upside. But price is first going to have to take out that 11, 582.75 level for that really to come to any kind of fruition out there. So that's the NQ really in detail out there um, and how I certainly go about evaluating the markets. Now, as long as these charts are up on the screen here, just looking for additional information, you've got the five-hour chart. So you know you've got a TD9 count bottom on the daily. You have a, a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom and a TD9 count bottom on the uh, five-hour chart. Price is dealing with resistance at the top of its profile. This could be signaling a, uh, a move up to the 12140 level. You've got a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom on the four-hour chart. Price is dealing with the 11,457 area. That's a resistance of the top of its uh, bearish structured profile there. Two consecutive closes above that. Say we're off to the races. Those races, 12, 140.50. The 120-minute chart has resistance at 11,600 and a quarter. You close above that. That's a, uh, 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 a, a bullish move out here. In the case of the 60-minute, uh, we've already reviewed that. We've reviewed the 30-minute. Uh, support on the 15-minute is down at 11,396, but it's really 11,386 that I believe is a key area to be watching and observing. Now, what happens if price closes below that? Well, 
then more likely than not, the NQ on a 60-minute time frame may have flipped to a bearish crossover. Don't know if it will or won't at that stage. We'd have to take a look at it. If it uh, does switch to a bearish crossover, then we can get back and we can target uh, Friday's uh, lows out there. That would be its message. But right now, I'd be watching the 11386 area out there, and that is for the NQs. If we move over, we've just got a few seconds here before the break. Uh, let's uh, try to uh, punch up the uh, ES Mini. Uh, see what its uh, chart uh, signals are providing us. But it's really the NQ, I think, that is going to be the strong dog. If this market is going to rally, it's going to be the NQ that is going to be the uh, dog in the hunt out there. So with regard to the ES Mini, still taking just a tad of time here to uh, populate. Got about 15 seconds. May just have to do this when we get back from this uh, break out there. So I think that's what we'll do, but I'll leave this chart up on our screen for those of you following along inside the Tiger's Den. We'll be right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. So that 60-minute uh, uh, ES mini chart here shows uh, TD9 count breakout support at 36.79. We're trading right now at 36.79, so we can see that price is testing a real key level of support out here. This also had a TD9 count top. Now, the TD9 count top uh, completed at about 5 o'clock this morning, so that is an effect. That says that if price were to close above, in this case here, I'm going to use the uh, top of its profile, 37.25. That is the uh, ES Mini. Then that would suggest that price would go target to the upside, the 37.79.50 area out here. Now, price is also testing the swing point. That formed out here at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. This was uh, yesterday. And uh, that high out there is uh, 36.8375. If we close below that on a 60-minute basis, odds favor we go down and we retest the lows out there. But right now, 60-minute chart shows, shows that support 
uh, is uh, being tested. That's 11:30. Got uh, 30 minutes left to go. Now, this will be helpful. I think to try and understand what the markets, uh, the strength or weakness of the market out here. If we take a look at the 30-minute time frame for the S&P 500, you'll see that it is uh, severely uh, Taz market breadth bearish. So the sellers should be able to truly flush this down to yesterday's low, at least on a 30-minute chart. What I mean by that is there's 312 instruments right now at 1131 trading below the bottom of 30-minute profile and 61 trading above that level. That's for the, no reason for us to really, well, that's a 30-minute time frame. Let's go look at the 60-minute time frame. Remember, on the 60-minute time frame, we, it was overwhelmingly bullish for the NQ out here. We take a look at the uh, ES Mini or the S&P 500. That is, uh, well, not the case necessarily. Here, as we look at a 60-minute time frame chart, what we see, it's still bullish, meaning 100, oh, bearish, I take that back. 142 instruments trading above the top of the profile, 167 trading below the bottom. So what sellers should be in control of the, uh, of the, uh, of the market here for the S&P 500 uh, there we go. You're, you are in, if you take a look at those speed dials, TAS market breadth, you are bearish for all of those. So the reason why I say this is important is because based upon market breadth, sellers should be able to send price lower. And if this 36.79 level holds, a TD9 count breakout area, that's telling us something. Now, if you're going to be trading intraday, I think it's the NQ that's providing you with the uh, best uh, feedback and information and from a market breadth standpoint out there. But watch this 36.79. If this holds and then those highs get taken out, meaning to close above 37 and a quarter out there, it should be uh, freewheeling to the upside. Now, nothing's going to be freewheeling. TAS market breadth for the daily, weekly, uh, even those 240-minute time frames is bearish. So you've got to expect that on moves higher, rallies are going to be sold. But you've got enough daily bottoming signals. In fact, where am I at? I'm charts here, I'm right over there. If we take a look at this, this is the daily indices. So here, if you take a look at, the, these are the daily cash indices, the Dow TD9 count bottom, should target 31.79 or thereabouts. The S&P TD9 count bottom, 37.90 is a target. The NDX 100, 11.629 is a target after its TD9 count bottom. The Russell, 1747 is its target. The semiconductor index, we need a bullish reversal candle. That's probably what we really need or what the market really needs in order for some rally to get some kind of legs out there is a bullish reversal candle to confirm a bottom pattern there. However, the semiconductor, if we take a look at the SMHs out here, so let me go switch uh, screens and we'll pull those up uh, here. Uh, change the screens. What the SMHs have effectively done is they have completed the bottom the pattern that they have is a test and rejection of a prior swing point. So we're going to switch over to take a look at that. We'll take a look at the daily time frame. We'll expand out this chart. So the swing point low inside of the SMHs took place on uh, July 5th. 7.2 million shares out there. That was tested and rejected uh, two days ago with 4.3 million shares. Yesterday's close was uh, 190.13. Still a test and rejection on lighter volume, 2.9 million shares versus 7.2. So what the SMHs are, so the SMHs have a bottom signal. Now, as long as we're on this chart here, much like many of the ETFs, I don't mean to jump around, but uh, if we take a look at the uh, current profile that is forming, it is below, it is above price. And that's a bearish message. What I mean by that is tells us that there is overhead supply. So the resistance level inside the semiconductors, the SMHs, is likely going to be that 197.43. Not that price can't close above it, but boy, the sellers should be lurking right there. But in the meantime, the SMHs have tested and rejected a lower swing point with light volume. And then if we switch back and take a look at the rest of the indices out here, just to finish those up, give me a moment. Back to that screen, you've got the Dow Transports. They have a TD9 count bottom, should take price to 12.652. NASDAQ Composite, TD9 count bottom, 11.206 is its target. New York Stock Exchange, TD9 count bottom, 14.191 is its target. So with regard to the TD9s, it's not that they can't fail, but what they should do is they should be able to achieve the first outcome, which is getting back to levels of uh, resistance out here. And on the cash indices, those levels of resistance are, in fact, the oscillator and change line areas out there. So that's what I see when I take a look at the uh, indices out here. One minute, uh, I'm going to switch back and take a look to the black background charts, because much like the SMHs, the ETFs out here, the ET index ETFs, you'll see those here in a moment, each of them are also forming new profiles and all of those are above price 
So again, they deliver the same message, which is that there's overhead supply. That overhead supply is a bearish directional message. It's not that it can't be overcome. It's just right now the overall message here is this is nothing more than a counter trend rally. I would expect the spies, they would find resistance at around the 378 to 381 level. The Qs would find resistance at about the 282 to 285 level. The diamonds, 299 to 304. And the IWM would be in the 174 to 175 area out there. So that covers kind of the markets overall in uh, general. So I hope that that assists you. We do have at least one question that has come in. This was from Dan earlier. And Dan wanted to take a look at ticker symbols, I-N-D-O. So let me just remain on the uh, black background charts here for a moment. And uh, Dan, my apology, I don't recall the question. So uh, it's just too hard for me to go back and take a look through all those details. So here's what we know about uh, I-N-D-O. Actually, on my other screen... Yesterday was bar number eight of a TD9 count. Today will become bar number nine. So long as price closes below, it looks like this uh, area right here. Well, let me get my data box, sorry. Give me a moment here, folks. So, Dan, as long as price closes below 624 today, you are going to get a confirmed TD9 count bottom. Steve, please share midterm levels on Indo. It's a microcap Indonesian oil play that tends to respond to oil moves with very high highly correlated volatility i'm long a bit above current levels thanks okay so you're going to get a td9 count bottom and uh, we can see that the daily profiles are well above price 787 i'm not suggesting that that's where price is headed to um, let's switch over to my white background charts i think dan that they will assist us a little bit better than uh, these charts out here so we'll get over to those in a moment and on the daily time frame now you can see the td9 count uh, bottom out here that's going to complete today what price should do dan is uh, bounce up to the 611 ish area that's daily oscillator and chains on it is red if you get a test and rejection as it did on the trading day of september 9th on september the uh, 12th uh, September the 14th. That's not what you want to see or because you're looking for a long position here. If you bounce up and you bounce off of that, then you still have a bearish market out there. Um, if price can overtake that level, well, then that brings into account the uh, prior uh, uh, profiles. And that's at the 787 area. The weekly chart, which has got a gigantic TD9 count top out there. Um, this is suggesting over time, Dan, that price could be pulling back to 261. That is its breakout level. Now, in order for that to happen, the TD9 count bottom pattern would have to fail. So that's something that you would keep an eye on. So right now, with regard to Indo, we'd say 611. We do have one other time frame chart, Dan, I can pull over here for you, and that's the 30 minute. Let's do that quickly. What does that have? That has a nice roads momentum indicator bottom that took place at the close yesterday, a gap to the upside right now. So the 30 minute is looking very good out here. It's that daily time frame. That daily time frame also looks pretty good, so this should make its way to 611. Hope that helps you out. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Hope you're right. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. 
Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome uh, back, uh, folks. So inside our Tiger's Den, we've got a request out here. This is from this is from Joey D. Wants to take a look at FXE. So FXE is the ETF that uh, tries to emulate the euro. So I'll go take a look at the FXE for you, uh, Joey. But first, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the euro. So uh, I just have a number of things running in the background. It's taking just a little bit of time here to populate these charts. But uh, I don't know what, which way you are positioned on this. Um, as we take a look at the daily time frame for the euro, at least try to populate this chart out here. You can see prices moving lower doing less relative energy. This would require a bullish reversal candle to suggest a uh, bottom. So this says uh, likely prices to head lower. It's below profiles as well in the daily time frame. So that's what the daily chart. The five-hour chart uh, does not have a bottom signal, although price is testing support. Um, and uh, if we look at the 240-minute chart, no bottoming. Well, I say no bottoming pattern, but, you know, let me just expand this out just a tad. That could be a misnomer. Yeah, so there is an A to B equal CD to the downside. So the four hour, the five hour does have a confirmed by the D point pattern. And the A to B on this would look like this. Here's the A to B. I go to the lowest low, right? So I've got the highest high on this pattern. Now, there was some conversation earlier about the A to B equal CD pattern. So you start with the highest high, then you look for the lowest low. That's easy for me to figure out because I've got these automated tools that tell me where the low uh, bar forms on the Chapman wave. So that was wave number B on a 240-minute basis. And then I just simply, at this stage here, I'm just simply going to copy this line just to see where the one-to-one -one would take us to. Once you get to the one-to-one, -one, so there's where the one-to-one -one would take us to. Inside of the euro, you can see we got well below that. You formed a bullish piercing candle. Price right now is dealing with its uh, profiles and the oscillator and change line area. So just be aware that you do have some bottoming signals on the five-hour, four-hour chart here for the euro. Uh, you would have that same pattern on the two-hour time frame chart. Really, you'd have that same pattern on pretty much everything out here. So uh, what else is the – just looking at this um, – what should you be watching and observing? I think it's going to be just simply the lows, the present lows of the uh, euro out there. But the daily, and you know, it 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 absolutely looks bearish out here. But like the 60 minute right now, which has a TD9 count top, is testing support at 0.96. That level holds. I, you know, you could be seeing a consolidation or a further move higher out there. The 30 minute chart. I don't have a lot of great information out there for you on the uh, euro. Um, let's go take a look at the FXI. It, larger time, larger picture looks like it wants to head lower. Now, just be careful because of those intraday signals that are present out here. But now, let's go switch over and take a look at the FXE. In the case of the FXE, it looks very similar, doesn't it, uh, Joey, with regard to the daily time frame, time pushing lower? 
No and less relative energy. A bullish reversal candle would confirm a road momentum indicator bottom. We don't have that as we speak. The weekly chart shows that we're in bar number seven. This too would need a bullish reversal candle to confirm a bottom. If we take a look at the monthly time frame chart, you can see the large A to B equals CD. We do have a potential wave number seven, but I think it's more likely C than it is seven. But no bottom signal uh, shown there on the FXE. So I would just simply tighten up my stop. Um, most certainly, uh, the stop I would at least put on the FXE would be at yesterday's high. If yesterday's high were to be taken out, they haven't seen a high taken out here for really well. The last high that was taken out, when was it? Looks like it might have been September 16th out there. So I hope that helps you out, Joey D, if you are along that or just we're looking for general information for, for that instrument out there. Uh, let's see. It looks like we've got a... Oh, Great. Uh, thank you. I was just a comment out there teaching on the NQ charts. So my pleasure with that. Uh, let me see if I've got some requests that have come in by email. And it turns out uh, we do. We've got uh, two. Uh, Sergey writes in and said, recently joined TFN. Well, welcome to what we like to refer to as the Hotel California. Because, Sergey, once you do check in, you ain't checking out. Can you check EVFM for me? We can. So let me get this fired up. EVFM. And... Uh, EVFM and Sergey, how did you find out about us? Not the, I mean, mental telepathy wise, you might answer and then I could uh, hear back. But uh, uh, if you do write back to me, I'd be curious, how did you find us? I see EVFM is heavily shorted. Whoa. What's the probability of a squeeze? Well, first of all, I, it's hard for me to contemplate that anybody would short an 18 cent stock. So uh, maybe that's the case. Uh, Sergey, what, instead what I would be doing is looking at the uh, patterns out here. Um, and, you know, this is not exactly a very liquid stock. Now, these charts, the white background charts, don't show that. Let me just switch over to the black background screens for you, and, and you'll see that. So as an example, the volume inside this instrument yesterday. Now, this is at, this is, uh, at about $0.18, cents, 2.7 million shares out there. It doesn't take much in the way of dollars to manipulate this stock. That's the very first thing that I would share with you. So be very, very careful out here. What I can share with you about this instrument is that if it can get below, this is either today or tomorrow. If it can spike below the low of September 21st, that is 16 cents. So far, today's low has been 17 cents. You need to see at least a 15 cent tick out there. If you do that today or tomorrow, then you will generate a TD nine count bottom pattern. And that would then suggest, depending on where price closes, it could just simply be price making its way to 23 cents, the top of its profile. The other target area could be 34 cents. So 34 cents is coming from the potential TD Nike. Well, the TD Nike out pattern is going to, well, is likely going to uh, complete. Won't really know until we see today's price action because today's price action price must close below in order for a TD9 count not a valid TD9 count meaning a bottoming pattern but just a TD9 count in order for that to even take effect or form today price must close below 20 cents and uh, you're at 18 right now so I think we'd really have to come back to this but I wouldn't load up on this um, you know at 18 cents I would just trade it like I like I would trade it uh, you know, just just normal out here. So the 34 cents was the TD9 count uh, breakdown resistance level. That uh, doesn't will will not complete until we get to today's uh, bar completion out there. But that's where it is present at the moment. So Sergey, glad that you uh, joined us here at the Hotel California. I'll look forward, and the other uh, 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 contributors will look forward to hearing you as well. As far as short squeezes on 18 cent stocks, yeah, I don't buy into any of that stuff. And be careful. This is easy to manipulate. All you needed for yesterday's trading was about $250,000. That's what it amounted to out there. So I hope that helps you out. Hector and uh, Patty want to take a look at ExxonMobil. By the way, yesterday we had a call or a request from, maybe it wasn't a call. It might have been a request for Rig out there. Uh, and uh, Rig looked like it was forming a, uh, a uh, TD Nike out bottom, which in fact it did. And I'm just going to check out here just for a moment. Oh, darn it. That was the wrong place. Uh, what I believe that rig has right now is an island bottom. TD9 count, yeah, and an island bottom pattern out there. So that's for whoever had called in. Nobody else should listen to that. Just kidding out there. That What that should do, in fact, let me, uh, I'll come back to ExxonMobil here in a moment. Maybe we'll finish off with that. If we take a look at what rig has actually done, it's made its way up to its uh, first level of resistance. Now, I don't have the oscillator on change line here, but you can see that rig also is forming a new daily profile above price. 
And that's at the 260 area, which has been the resistance letter, uh, level for uh, Transocean Limited out here. Uh, if price can close above 269, well, then maybe that overhead supply isn't so much overhead supply, and price will make a run for the 304 level. So we get back from this break. We'll take a look at the Exxon Mobil. It, too, is trying to form a TD9 count bottom today that could and should take price up to its offset and change line. That's at about $90.84. We'll take a look at those charts as soon as we're back. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we got the charts for ExxonMobil up on our screen out here. And uh, what you don't see is that yesterday was bar number eight of a TD9 count. Uh, it will complete a TD9 count bottom pattern today. Uh, you can see there's also an A to B equals CD pattern, but we don't have that bullish reversal candle to confirm that pattern. Do we need that to confirm the pattern? Yes, we do. Do we need to have that in order for uh, ExxonMobil to rally? No, we do not. We will have the TD9 count pattern that will form today. It will complete tomorrow. I mean, and you could get a push below the low of yesterday out there and still retain that pattern. But Hector and Patty's question is, is it time to load up here? Could we see a rip your face off rally? And I think the answer to that question is no. Now, the reason I switched back to my black background charts here is because it is picking up that early detection of a new profile that is a forming above price. And while those are out there, the message, the overall message that we're seeing from a number of charts that we put up, whether it was the index ETFs, whether it was the NQ chart for its daily time frame, whether it's ExxonMobil, whether it's RIG, is we're seeing all these profiles form above price. And that just simply 
gives us a caution signal out there. It says there's overhead supply, and then we should anticipate, and this could be a very nice counter-trend move. It needs to be a nice counter-trend move in order to work off its extreme oversold conditions out there. If we take a look at those oversold conditions, we'll just take a look at the... Uh, uh, this chart here, the advanced decline oscillator, you can see yesterday down in the minus uh, 300 area, minus 398.94. Uh, so this is an oversold condition that needs to be worked off. Now, it can be worked off by price continuing to move lower and this moving higher as it's done where these you see these lower, the red or the uh, green uh, uh, diagonal. Uh, areas are out there, but we do have a very oversold condition. So that basically says we come back to where we started the day, so to speak, and that was with our NQ charts out there because the NQ is the set of charts that are providing us with the most amount of information out here. Let's switch over to those before we end the show out here. And again, it's the 30 minute time frame that we're really watching and observing uh, to the upside, and that is at the 11 534. 75 cent area if price can overcome that uh, then you should see a further rally right now on the 60 minute chart we end this in four minutes it is trading below its breakout level of support at 11 386 folks thanks so much for joining me on terrific tuesday we're not sure about the schedule for wednesday and thursday out here hurricane wise i'm on my way right now after the show to naples to uh, put up some hurricane shutters have a great uh, tuesday folks hopefully i'll see you tomorrow on wonderful wednesday take care